Hey guys, what's up? Today I want to show you 10 great JRPGs released on consoles you already know about, but what you probably didn't know is that they were also released on a very unexpected console. So let's begin! Number 10, Disgaea. Granted, Disgaea is on several different systems nowadays, originally released on the PS2, then on PSP, PS4, Switch, and mother freaking phones. I'm pretty sure most people know all those versions, but the one I feel most of you don't know is the Nintendo DS release. That's right, there's a port of this guy on the DS and it's pretty decent. It's actually a port of a PSP port of the PS2 version. Yeah. That means it includes the multiplayer mode and of course the Edna mode, which is a story variation with her as a main character. It also includes the same features seen in the PSP version, the Geo Cubes and the Demon Gadgets. Magic items that, if used correctly, can easily break the game. Guest characters like Adele and Rosaline from This Gaia 2 are back as unlockable, including Plain Air and, for the first time, Overlord Zeta. This is a solid release and it plays very well on the DS despite its hardware limitations. Give it a try if you can. Number 9. Ogre Battle – March of the Black Queen Back in the 90s, it was very rare to see obscure games like this get the port treatment to enemy systems. Ogre Battle was released on the Super Nintendo, and it may have been popular in Japan, but it never went mainstream overseas. In fact, I think a lot of people don't even know what this game's about. Well, you play as a commander in charge of a revolution against an empire that's gone rogue because of black magic. In fact, tarot and arcana cards influence everything here. The goal is to play in these real-time strategy maps, securing locations and liberating cities. Characters will fight enemies by themselves in turn-based combat when they can make contact. You can only influence these battles precisely with the Arcana cards. It's challenging and it includes sorting out through unit management, but I don't think it's that hard to get into. Well, this game has a version on the PS1 ported by Atlus for some reason. Barely any new features were there, but the most important is that you can now save anywhere, whereas in the original, you could only save after each chapter. A Sega Saturn port was also there, but only in Japan. Digital ports for phones and even the Wii U came afterwards, based on the SNES version. I recommend the PS1 release above all others, but that's just my opinion. Number 8. The Final Fantasy Adventure yeah, that very early action RPG released on the Game Boy that has nothing to do with Final Fantasy. Its real name is Adventures of Mana. Yep, the first mana game ever created. They localized it with that other name because Final Fantasy was a brand and was the only famous RPG franchise outside Japan back then. Well, that and Dragon Quest, of course. However, in Europe it was called Mystic Quest. Huh. No, not that Mystic Quest. Anyway, if you think the unexpected console it was released on is the collection of mana on PS4 and Switch, think twice. It got two remakes before that. That's right, remakes, not ports. It will surprise you to know that Sword of Mana on the Game Boy Advance is actually the first remake it got. Here you play as either a guy or a girl in a version with an expanded story. Visuals are more reminiscent of Secret of Mana on the SNES, while controls allow you to move freely around. The own chosen hero or heroine will be your only ally controlled by the computer. This is a great version to play of this game. And there's yet another remake of it most of you probably didn't know about. One that was digital only for the criminally underrated PS Vita. Well, it was first released for mobile phones worldwide. With full 3D visuals completely redone, still top-down view, again with the Secret of Mana type of combat, you're the male hero no matter what, but you're accompanied by the heroine, but she and other characters have different skills you can use in battle. This is a pretty cool second remake, but it has its ups and downs. Out of the three versions, I can't really pick which one is the best, but at least I can say you can't go wrong with any of them.
Number 7. Half Minute Hero This forgotten action RPG is a game most people know for its original PSP release, though for some reason I feel its Steam remake is more popular. You control an unlucky guy who's practically coerced by a money-loving goddess to get rid of the evil lords in every single part of the world. Battles are played in real time with zero control from the player. Thing is, you only have 30 seconds to level up and traverse the overworld. Thankfully, you can restore those same 30 seconds by paying money to the goddess. This is a really fun game, but did you know it had a remake for the Xbox 360 Live? That's right, digital only, but it's there, and yes sir, it's a full reimagining of the game. Well, it was subtitled as Super Mega Neo Climax because it has a mode to play with modern nice graphics. Some of the minigames or mini-episodes included here have improved, six new quests are there after beating the game, there's also DLCs, achievements and an online multiplayer feature. I say you can't go wrong with any version of this game, but if you're curious, go ahead and try the 360 version. Number 6. Lunar the Silver Star Lunar is a game that's seen a bunch of ports and remakes since its inception on the Sega CD. You're probably most familiar with the PS1 version, the first remake, which would also be released on the Sega Saturn and PC, but only in Japan! We got the PS1 version, and 13 years later, it's version for phones, if you actually care about those. You may also be familiar with its PSP remake from back in 2009 called Silver Star Harmony. That is my favorite version to play of the game for its enhanced 3D graphics, its rebalanced gameplay and its brand new prologue with other characters, an episode that's pretty much exclusive to this release. But the really unexpected release of this little gem that most people don't know about is its Game Boy Advance version. And when I say version, I mean it because it looks, plays and sounds like a GBA original game, kind of like Sword of Mana. Even though some content was cut out, or more like changed, known pretty much as a retelling of the story. Several gameplay differences are here though, like a shrunk overworld based mostly on menus and no random encounters. Characters do not move around during battle anymore, all of them now having special powers like the limit breaks in Final Fantasy. Overall, this is a pretty decent version to play if you can't get your hands on the others. Not the best one, but definitely not a bad remake. Number 5. Shining Force This influential strategy RPG came out initially on the Sega Genesis and that's the version everyone knows. Of course we can add all of its inclusions and iterations in Sega's constant compilations on other systems. It's been there on almost every single one of them from the PS2 to the PSP to modern systems. And each version looks slightly upgraded in terms of visuals by the way. But there's one little remake, that's right, remake, it got back in 2004 that people keep overlooking nowadays. It's called Resurrection of the Black Dragon for the Game Boy Advance. Same game, rebalanced difficulty, updated graphics, a rework on the sprites and portraits, except it has an expanded story, three new playable characters, one of them being able to use cards in battle. This card feature was also expanded throughout the story. You know, as much as I love the original version, I gotta go with this one. It is an excellent release that plays gracefully on the GBA. I know nowadays it's easier to play the Genesis versions in most of the collections out there, but I hope you can give this remake a try one day. Number 4. Is 1 and 2. Let me tell you on how many damn consoles these two games are. Of course, most of these versions have remained in Japan. The best version to play for me is their PSP full remix known as Is 1 and 2 Chronicles, but there's one little release most people don't seem to know about, one that was strangely published by Atlus in North America, the Nintendo DS version. 
It's known as Legacy of Ease Books 1 and 2, which are also remix of the original two episodes, but not quite the same as the PSP version. Biggest difference is perhaps the fact that you can actually push a button so Adol can use his sword, whereas in any other version, including the PSP remix, you just bump into enemies. The DS release came before, though, with separate versions of each game in Japan. We only got the usual bundle with two episodes as a remake with 3D graphics, updated sound, and even a weird multiplayer with up to four people. I have no idea how that works in a game with only one playable protagonist. But anyway, there you have it, Ease 1 and 2 on a million retro consoles, including the NDS. Number 3. Xenogears Nope, I'm not talking about that digital re-release version on the PlayStation Store, PS3 and PS Vita, no sir. Recently, Square Enix announced a full remake finally at long last of this game for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. And yes, it's going to keep being a turn-based RPG, no action RPG, man, oh yeah. It will be released in 2023, like I said, for the PS4, the PS5, and maybe one day we can see a Steam. <laughs> yeah, right. Keep dreaming, dude. Real number 3, Xenosaga 1 and 2. Nope, this is not a joke. If you thought Xenosaga 1 and 2 were PS2 exclusives, that's because you've never heard of the Nintendo DS version. And I honestly have no clue what's it doing there or why they decided to release it here. It seems to me that the Nintendo DS was home, very unexpectedly, to a lot of PlayStation JRPGs. Similar to the 3DS with games like Dragon Quest 7, 8 and Tales of the Abyss. Unfortunately, this DS version of Xenosaga stayed in Japan. There's been some fan translation projects, but they've all been abandoned halfway through. I usually don't cover only in Japan games in these types of videos, but this one just fit the criteria so perfectly, and from what I've heard, it's a very good game. It pretty much gets rid of several cinematics and tons of inconsequential dialogue the original PS2 games had, so I played it and met this really unique turn-based battle system that reminded me of Enchanted Arms. Up to three characters are positioned in these grids and can be moved around to create different formations. They also have death blow attacks, something that wasn't in the original games. Man, I wish we could have gotten this strange Nintendo DS release, so I really hope it gets fully fan translated one day. Number 2 Octopath Traveler this is a turn-based RPG with saga influences that's very beautiful but also very challenging. Everyone knows it was first released as a Switch exclusive until it got its Windows release a year later in 2019. Players could now suffer through this massive grindfest on their computers. Well, the next year in 2020, it was released on Google Stadia! Yeah, please pretend you care in the comments. Yeah, I figured you probably don't, so let me tell you instead about its Xbox One release. That I know for a fact at least a few gamers give a damn about. It's digital only, so that means the Switch is still the only physical version out there. Did anything change in this Microsoft acquisition? Nope. The Xbox One is more powerful than the Switch, so graphically speaking it's obviously better than the Switch, but that's about it. My point is, Switch JRPGs usually don't come out to Xbox, or Google Stadia for that matter. Well, Dragon Quest XI kinda did too. So it was very unexpected to see this game released over there. Also, if you kinda care about it, it got a prequel for phones in Japan, scheduled to be released this year worldwide. No console version whatsoever yet. Number 1. Dot hack GU Last Recode In this day and age, it isn't unexpected to see PS4 games being released also on Steam. This trilogy was originally published on the PS2, and it remained exclusive for 10 years until its PS4 and Windows remastered. Both versions included a short extra episode, which acted as an epilogue. The story follows Haseo and others, which are actually characters controlled by real people in a virtual MMORPG called The World. 
A virus infects the game and it's up to our heroes to find its cause and save the affected players. This is an action RPG with a great script, great controls, improved interface, combat and obviously graphics. Anyway, another thing that isn't unexpected is to see PS4 games released on Switch, that's very common. But in case you didn't know, this remaster got its Switch release, but it was only recently. It took five goddamn years for Bandai Namco to release this forgotten masterpiece on the Switch. So now that it's in three modern and really popular systems, I hope the glory days of that hack GU come back once again. Several months ago I did a very similar video, but with JRPGs that you probably didn't know were released on the Switch. It's right here, so go check it out when you have the time. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time!